Hello and welcome to my 2024 F1 season simulation. This is the part 14. If you missed part 13, that was the Hungarian Grand Prix. Make sure to check that one out before you see this one, as that was uh, the video that was narrated by Captain Ajax himself. Uh, thanks again for him to do a voiceover for that video. He did amazing and I'm really happy it worked out well. Uh, here we are for the round 14 of season Belgian Grand Prix the last Grand Prix before summer break. So, Belgian Grand Prix is, um, it, it, it causes a lot of chaos uh, in the recent, uh, recent seasons, it has, but it wasn't like the good, it's kind of chaos, like it didn't bring insane results, insane like uh, exciting races or whatever. Like, uh, last year was all right, but it was just another dominant max victory. And even though we saw some rain throughout the, the, the race, that was the only exciting part, really, about the entire race. And the races before that, I mean, 2022 was just... Up until lap 14 was, like, alright, but then Max just... Yeah, um, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the, of the circuit itself, but he hasn't produced the best races recently. Uh, maybe it can change in this season, in this simulation, uh, perhaps. Hopefully, uh, in terms of weather, because weather is a huge topic in Belgium, especially, uh, we have a completely dry uh, forecast for the entire weekend. So, no rain expected for any of the sessions, uh, which is, I guess, good. Because the, I mean, yeah, we had rain last year, but before that, whenever we got the rain, it was like too much rain, and then we. We got to sit in front of the TV for six hours of watching nothing as yeah we saw free life behind the safety car and basically no race. Let's hope that never happens happens again at any point uh, in F1 history or uh, in the future. Okay. Um, let's look at the upgrades for this grid for this Grand Prix. We have free uh, free for Red Bull uh, for, for Aston Martin. Those those are the teams with larger upgrade packages for this Grand Prix. There are a couple of teams uh, which bring a couple of small of the car, namely McLaren Racing Bulls, Williams, and Alpine. Yeah. Uh, the thought of Red Bull being even stronger is uh, def definitely scary, as their form in the last few races has been pretty good. I mean, <laughs> uh, Max has quite a big championship lead at this point, and it doesn't look like uh, they can be challenged. But in the constructors, it's, it's looked like they have a challenger in McLaren, at least at least one challenger right now, and they're them jumping in front of McLaren and just the, building a gap is a very not exciting thought, to be to be honest. Well, let's see Q1. Maybe maybe I will be wrong in the end. I am uh, yeah. Uh, Red Bull went to and provisionally in Q1 with Max or stuff and ahead of Charles Perez in P2. We have Charles Leclerc. Carl Sainz, Lance Stroll, ahead of, of Brandon Alonso. Then we have the McLaren Oscar PS3, Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton, P9 is Norris, P10 is Russell. Uh, Ricardo in P11, the 92 Alpines of Ocon and Gasly in P12 and P13. P14 for Albon and P15 for Nico Hulkenberg, just making it through originally into Q2. And we have a uh, very, very sad looking uh, out in Q1. You can know that the Racing Bulls car. Yeah, it looks like. The racing bulls car looked very, very strong at some circuits and on others it's just a back marker. It's like really weird. Sometimes they're they're really strong and sometimes they're just in the midfield and towards the back of the field. Uh, looks like Ricardo is bashing this Grand Prix a bit better so far. Uh, provisionally, obviously, Q1, Sergeant 17, 18 for Bottas, 19 for Joe, and 20 for Magnussen, which kind of resembles the actual World Drive Championship standings with Joe and Magnussen in the last two positions, and then Bottas, Hulkenberg, and Sargent uh, down there as well. Uh, obviously, Snow is a bit higher up in the Drive Championship. Yeah, but let's see if there are any changes for the final classification, as there are changes, and there's a, there's a couple. Uh, there's the one thing I forgot to mention earlier. Uh, Magnussen, with a mistake, uh, driver which caused his lap time to be very, very slow and unfortunately didn't get to so another, which also meant that uh, he started in P20. Which, I mean, isn't like that 
shocking for Haas, but remember they brought a huge upgrade package for for Hungary, and it seemed like it it made them not the back markers anymore. It uh, seems like they're uh, they have a gap to the Sauber cars behind them at the moment, at least in Nico, at least in Nico Hulkenberg's uh, case. Um, yeah, uh, the little lap time for Carlos Sainz, who drops from, uh, I think it was P3 to now P5, so not that big of a deal, still gets through comfortably, and uh, I think that's that's all. Uh, so out in Q1, officially are Yuki Tsunoda, Logan Sargent, uh, Lachary Bottas, Gwenya Zhou, and Kevin Magnussen. So, let's see if Q2 will bring any surprises, as we have Carlos Sainz provisionally topping the session Head of Checo Perez and P2 per P3, only P3 Max Verstappen. This is the weird. Uh, P4 for Lionel Norris, P5 for L L Fernando Alonso, P6 for Charles Leclerc, and it's Ocon, Albon, Stroll, and PS3 rounding out of the top 10. We have Pierre Gasly in P11, uh, Ricardo P12, Hulkenberg P13, and then the two Mercedes cars of Hamilton and Russell in P14 and P15. I gotta explain one thing. There was a red flag, which was unfortunately caused by Lewis Hamilton, Having a driver which caused the red flag as his car was not able to get back into the pits. Uh, which also affected a lot of drivers who only could set up one one hot lap basically. Uh, which kinda kinda uh, explains why is the order much much weirder and much much uh, different from Q1. Um yeah, very very strange and uh, there might be some changes, I don't know, I don't remember <laughs> so, this simulation uh, quite a few days ago. Hmm. Okay, this is, this is interesting. Yeah, science topping the session is definitely interesting. Uh, yeah, the two Mercedes cars, P14, P15, looks like Mercedes is uh, having like one good weekend and one horrible weekend at this point. Uh, Gasly behind Ocon, so Ocon doing better. Um, yeah, Ricardo Hulkenberg there for their team and pretty much uh, nothing really else to say so far. Let's see if there are any changes for the final classification. As there are changes, there are some changes. Uh, most notably, Carlos Sainz without the time as he gets his only lap time deleted, which was which, which topped Q2, but it was just over track limits. Unfortunately for Carlos Sainz, it means he's in P15 and he's not in Q3 for the second consecutive Grand Prix in a row, uh, same thing happening in Hungary, I don't know if it was Q2 or Q1, but uh, it was the same case in getting his lifetime deleted, or it was uh, a reliability issue, uh, nonetheless it was a no time for Carl Sainz, uh, as it is once again. Pierre Gasly is another one, uh, another driver with a deleted lap time, as well as Alex Albon, but it still doesn't save Mercedes, which have both, which has both cars out in Q2. So out in Q2 officially are Alex Albon, Lewis Hamilton, Pierre Gasly, George Russell, and Carlos Sainz. Topping the session officially is Checo Perez, which <laughs> is kind of funny. Uh, considering it's Belgium, where Max used to have quite a big margin over Perez, especially in qualifying. Uh, Lionel Norris P3, Alonso P4, Charles Leclerc P5, Ocon P6 so far. Ocon is looking very good. Um, Lionel Schoen P7, PS3, yeah. Ricardo and Hulkenberg somehow get into Q3, which is wild. But for Hulkenberg, it's, a, it's good news because it seems like the Haas upgrades have made the Haas car kind of a midfield car. Over us. It's, they're just not back markers anymore, at least. Uh, at this race, it seems like. Uh, let's see what Kyu Free will bring us as we see Max Verstappen topping the session, provisionally on pole position, uh, with a Fernando Alonso just 29 thousandths of a second behind in P2. Uh, Checo in P3, uh, Leclerc in P4, Stroll in P5, Lando is only in P6, so in the McLaren. Uh, won the Hungarian Grand Prix. A bit of a spoiler, but yeah, at this point, he should have watched the Hungarian Grand Prix before. Um, yeah, that was, I am pretty sure that was his first, actually, second victory in, in the simulation and in Formula One, technically. Uh, P7 for Ocon, very good provisionally in P7 there. PS3 only P8, quite a big margin to uh, 
two Norris as well. Ricardo P9 and Hulkberg in P10. Yeah, those two somehow gonna take Q3. It's not like they will fight with any of the cars in the top eight. Anyway, provisionally this is how things stand. Let's see if there are any changes for a final qualifying classification as there's only one change, which is Lance Stroll getting his lap time deleted and drops from P5 to P7, which means yeah, this is the final final results of Q3. Quite interesting. Yeah, Slastro unfortunately due to that lap time deleted is over eight tenths of a second behind Alonso, which doesn't look good. Uh but yeah, uh, things happen, at least in P7. Anyways, let's get let's recap the starting grid first off. As we have Max Verstappen uh, lining up on pole position with Fernando Alonso alongside him in P2. For the rest of the grid, we have Checo Perez in P3, Charles Leclerc in P4, P5 for Norris, P6 for Ocon, very good qualifying from him, P7 for Lance Stroll, P8 for Oscar Piastri, P9 and P10 for Ricardo and Hulkenberg, P11 just as a just outside the top uh, top 10 is Alex Albon, uh, behind him P12 is Lewis Hamilton, P13 Pierre Gasly, P14 George Russell, P15 uh, Carlos Sainz, P16 Yuki Tsunoda, P17 Logan Sargent, P18 Roger Bottas, P19 Guan Yu Zhou, and P20 starting last is Kevin Magnussen. Uh, I need to apologize for uh, my brain not really being 100% uh, efficient, uh, as you can as you can see, uh, um, or as you can hear, I should say, um, like not formulating my sen sentences uh, perfectly. Uh, this is mostly due to me doing not doing videos, like not, not recording videos in a week and less. Uh, yesterday I had a stream for like two and a half hours. I talked a lot, and I I'm probably a bit tired still. So apologies for that. Uh, anyway, let's move into the race. Uh, let's see. What the Belgian Grand Prix will bring us today. As we have Max Verstappen winning the Belgian Grand Prix from pole position, ahead of Fernando Alonso in P2, uh, only the fastest lap, and it's Checo Perez completing the uh, podium in P3. Yeah, um, pretty much the same starting positions as well as Charles Leclerc in P4 from P4 on the grid. And we have last row in P5, making up two positions to finish. P5 from P7 on the grid, P6 for Norris dropping only one spot, P7 for Scopriastri moving up one position, P8 for Esteban Ocon still very good points from Alpine, uh, even though he dropped two positions from his P6 grid spot, P9 for Carlos, Carl Sainz making up six positions, very good drive, uh, considering yeah, all, all, all the circumstances, P10 for Lewis Hamilton last, last point, Pink position and the P11 just outside the points is his teammate George Russell. P12 for Daniel Ricciardo and P13 for Nico Hulkenberg. Unfortunately, those P10 positions uh, on the starting grid didn't really bring them points today as yeah, uh, their cars aren't really uh, good at race pace uh, compared to the top teams, obviously. P14 for Alex Albon uh, dropping three positions just like the you know, two drivers ahead of him. P15 for Pierre Gasly dropping two spots. P16 for Yuki Tsunoda, he stays there. So, yeah, racing was not really a uh, quick car this weekend. Uh, P17 for Sauber uh, of Valtteri Bottas. P18 for Kevin Magnussen. Unfortunately, couldn't couldn't really uh, get anywhere any any higher, basically. Which is weird. I mean, the Haas... Obviously, it's not like the best car ever. It's, it's almost up there with the midfield car, though, with like... Uh, Alpine and Williams. Uh, yeah, obviously there's, there's still a significant gap over Haas, but it's not like Haas is still in the category. It's like uh, weird, because Magnussen, according to race space, should be ahead of Bottas, but it just uh, seems like Bottas could fend off Magnussen and keep the P17, P18 for Magnussen, making up two positions, P19 for Guanyu Zhou, and that was the last finishing driver as Logan Sargent is DNFing from the race due to his own error, which broke the car. And, uh, but, uh, but fortunately, he could return to the pits, causing no interruptions, which is, I guess, unfortunate for a lot of drivers who hope to uh, hope to be higher up the grid. But, I mean, um, sometimes things like this happen. Uh, we cannot get chaos every single race. 
But yeah, let's see how this affected the World Driver Championship as we have Max Verstappen still leading the way now with an uh, even bigger gap of... Uh, I don't even know. I don't even want to count the gap he had right now. 244 points, three victories, nine podiums, six pole positions, and eight fastest lap, uh, eight fastest laps. Uh, P2 in the race as well in the championship is Fernando Alonso, 182 points, three victories, six podiums, three poles, and two fastest laps. Now Charles Leclerc meeting is uh, third place in the drive championship on 164 points, two victories, three podiums, and three fastest laps. And we have Lando Norris. Uh, maintaining his P4 on 156 points, two victories, four podiums, and two poles. Uh, Oscar Piastri is teammate uh, just behind him in P5, 152 points, so very close between them still. Two victories, four podiums, two poles, and a fast slap for him. P6 for George Russell, only 130 points. Uh, yeah, looks like Mercedes is really dropping down in performance. Uh, during this middle part of the season. Only one victory and six podiums for George Russell so far. Jaco Perez uh, jo jumping to P7, making out two places with that podium. And Spa uh, with three podiums now to his name on 105 points. So finally in triple digits, while Max has just dominated the championship. Kind of what you would expect based off last season. Uh, if the order of the cars were like close to each other so basically what the simulation is just red bull still the best car but the gap is significantly smaller than last year uh to the other cars behind them uh okay p8 for lewis hamilton dropping one spot on 102 points at a podium so yeah Lewis still not having the greatest season but as we saw in the in the uh, recap race recap that I did uh, a week ago about a week ago for the first 12 races we saw Hamilton really beating Russell in the in the, in the well uh, from the race 7 to race 12 that was uh, from the head to heads perspective Lewis was the better driver than George Russell but since the Mercedes dropped in pace uh, yeah, I couldn't really get uh, more points over Russell. I still is 28 points behind Russell in the championship. P9 for Carlos Sainz so far, getting two plus points from this race, dropping one on spot in the Georgia championship. Now 97 points, a uh, uh, win, three podiums, and pole position. P10 for last roll on 69 points, a nice number with uh, staying the same in the championship, but catching a tiny bit to drivers in front. Obviously I don't I don't really think Stroll has potential to finish anywhere any higher than P10 right now. But you know you never know. Last row could just get five podiums uh whatever <laughs> it's, it's five races. You never know it's just a simulation. Uh 10 points from him and two podiums so far so 69 points yeah uh was sad P11 for UK Snow 48 points uh, yeah, a uh, bit of a rough streak for the Racing Bulls team. P12 for Pierre, Pierre Gasly on 24 points, and now P13 for Esteban Ocon making him one spot on 23 points now, just behind his teammate. And yeah, uh, only one point between them, even though the head to head would, uh, would say which driver is performing better uh, by a significant margin. Uh, you can watch the head-to-heads after the first 12 races, obviously, if you haven't already. P14 for Alex Albon, uh, P9, sorry, 19 points and a podium. Uh, P15 for Daniel Ricciardo on 12 points. P16 for Valtteri Bottas on 4 points. 17 for Sargent on 3 points. 18 for Nicole Kemberg on 2 points. And two drivers yet to score points in the simulation are Gwen Jo and Kevin Magnussen uh, in P19 and P20. So yeah, let's see the constructors, which we have no changes in the the spots, but we have Red Bull still leading the way on the 309 points now. Um, actually, it looks weird because Red Bull gained a lot of points over McLaren, but the gap is only, what is it, 6 plus 9, yeah, it's just like 15 points, but they get 25 points. I think the calculations are wrong. Uh, so take these uh, with a with a with a grain of salt, basically. Uh, I'll make sure it's fixed for the next Grand Prix, which is the Dutch Grand Prix. Uh, 
I'll explain what goes on here because I'm pretty sure there was no change uh, in the order, but the points don't look uh, correct. Yeah, uh, let's let's recap the the points anyway, even though they may be incorrect. 309 points for Red Bull, two victories, 10 podiums, 5 pulls, and 8 fastest laps with McLaren and P2, 294 points, 4 wins, 8 podiums, two, uh, 4 pole positions, and a fastest lap. P3 for Ferrari, 247 points, 3 victories, 6 podiums, a pole position, and 3 fastest laps. With Mercedes in P4, uh, on one victory and 7 podiums with 231 points. Aston Martin making some good gains. All Mercedes 222 points. Uh, three victory, seven podiums, three pole positions, and a fastest lap. Wow, uh, yeah. Uh, a, a good tight fight for P3 in the constructors right now. Uh, as I'm not able to tell you just what the gap is between the first and second place right now. As, as I know, it's, it's incorrect. But I cannot change it anymore. Uh, as I don't have... I actually don't have more time to record this again as unfortunately i'm already down in schedule and i'm recording this just before it's going to get uploaded basically uh p6 for racing wolves on 60 points p7 for alpine on 43 points making it four uh making it crashing out with four points basically still 17 points behind racing wolves but it's looking decent for alpine uh p8 for williams 22 points in the podium P9 for Cyber on 4 points and P10 for Haas on 2 points. Okay, those were the standings in the Constructor Championship after round 14. Next up is the Dutch Grand Prix, obviously the first race after the summer break. Uh, and uh, I made the the background behind the Dutch Grand Prix orange because I felt it was like fitting because I usually do it uh, based on uh, the colors, predominant color, basically, or the, the flags, predominant color, or the country's main color. But here I just did it for orange, basically, as that's, well, uh, it's kind of the theme of the Dutch Grand Prix. Just everyone in orange supporting Max Verstappen, which, uh, yeah, this is going to be an interesting Grand Prix. I'm pretty sure it's going to be very exciting, because Dutch Grand Prix has been exciting for the last few races, uh, also seasons. Am I supposed to say, yeah, uh, I should probably stop <laughs> stop the recording because uh, I, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Yeah, uh, make sure to watch the Dutch Grand Prix, which should be out tomorrow as far as I'm aware. And uh, yeah, we have daily uploads for the next few days, uh, as long as my brain is okay with it. Because yeah, today I'm just, I'm just so like weird with myself. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, despite me being weird, uh, consider subscribing for more F1 content and please comment and like as well if you enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, that's it from me for today. Uh, see you in the next one. See ya.